and this is more, this isn't just about closing a bridge, it's more about finding a solution to whatever it is. Um, and the state highway's here to, to work with us also, and uh, let's get to the bottom of whatever's gonna work. It's not just about closing the bridge, because that's just something that's on the table. But there's many different things that are on the table, so. The, the, the whole idea about this, making this bridge a fixed bridge versus a draw bridge come up kind of uh, off the cuff at one of our <coughs> first meetings, and uh, maybe when it was first stated, it sounded like it might might be worth uh, thinking about. But uh, uh, personally, uh, when you when you think about what you're giving up, and uh, really what little bit that it's going to save. I mean, we're talking about one time that we have to do something with this drawbridge to repair it and to uh, con to consider doing away with a drawbridge that we don't know what, how, how important it'll be in years to come or in the future. I, I think it's sort of cutting her nose off to spite her face. That's my personal opinion. I think, uh, I think the, set, the time that you're gonna save in, uh, in accomplishing this, this, this mission is, uh, it doesn't justify a decision of doing away with something that we've had. Because once you get rid of it, you've probably gone forever and, who knows what 20, 30 years will bring as far as it's going to take place above the bridge to the, in 20 or 30 years, that that would certainly have an effect on it. My, and this is just me personally, I mean, this is, this is a hearing today, so we'll certainly hear from many other people, but me personally, I'm not in favor of making a fixed bridge out of the Chester River Bridge. I think it's been a draw bridge for a lot of years for specific reasons and that we should work around keeping it that way. Uh, if we, if what we're looking at is a closure of two or three weeks, uh, three to four weeks, Shelley, so to, to do this, and this is a one-time thing. Now, it's going to be tough for a lot of people, but uh, maybe we, instead of closing something, instead of changing something that will be changed forever, maybe we ought to look at how we're going to deal with that. Um, what, like, like, should we station ambulances across there to, to make sure that if the, we have a problem that we don't have to go all the way around and pick up the patients and get back to the hospital. Those kind of issues that we can all deal with, but I think the idea of doing away with a, with a draw bridge is kind of really an awful wall in my opinion. And will not happen in 2015. There seems to be a lot of um, misinformation going around about whether in fact it is or isn't. Uh, in the letter that I read, um, from um, Ms. Peters to the college uh, is that it was, quote, removed from the contract, but I wasn't really sure what that meant. You want to uh, we actually, we did remove it from the contract, and it is not planned to be put out there this year because we want to make sure that we are all on the same page and we can do the right thing to serve, <coughs> to serve the community to make sure that when we do this work that we have the time to prepare whatever we need to prepare in order to do this. Right. And like Commissioner Pythian stated, we don't know what the future is going to bring, and we will have given up this very valuable piece of infrastructure for a week or two's inconvenience. In other words, if this takes a week, let's call it 10 days, and the paint job can be scheduled for three weeks, 21 days, we've given up our drawbridge to save a week and a half. By delaying this and getting through, this is my perspective, by getting through to possibly next year, at least it gives everybody in the community, which was not given the option before, to have a voice in this. We were, we were told in May or some time around there, we were gonna close the bridge for three or four weeks. Luckily, you know, Greg um, has met us in the middle and said, well, let's at least have this communication. Whatever comes out of this, it's a good thing to have this task force and to figure out what that pie is going to be. Um, I think everybody in this room, um, and we're going to start taking a few, a few uh, opinions and, and suggestions from the audience because that's part of what this is about. Um, and this is the first, this is a public hearing. This is the first uh, meeting of the minds in order to figure out what to do. I understand the real estate values. I've had realtors call me. I've had um, you know, everybody outside the box thinking. Uh, Mr. Paul Hanley, who really started rounding this up, I mean, um, he, he himself said, well, he'll, he can get through it. We've had this conversation. But there are other folks that may not be able to get through it. So I think that has to be part of the equation, whether or not the state 
if, if we put numbers together, whether or not the state will meet us in the middle somewhere on reimbursements to, to these businesses and losses, whether it's uh, you know, blocking out hotel rooms for the EMS services to, to have rooms from you know, Chester Harborside that work in our fire company here on this side, a volunteer, um, all these things. So no matter what happens here today, this is going to be a